I'm Dan Sikora. I'm a business consultant here at Vendavo. This is how I like to put a bunch of competitors on one chart and make sure that I can see which SKUs are important to me. So a robust scraping operation will capture prices of multiple SKUs from multiple competitors. And in that way, you can create a holistic view of the market. It's a competitor and SKU combination. The x-axis are your sales. This represents how important a SKU is to you. What about the y-axis? Well, this is the price delta between your price and the price of your competitors for an equivalent SKU. We're going to use the equation to compute a price difference of your competitor's price divided by your price minus one times 100% dots or that competitor SKU combination that are above the x-axis means that the competition is priced above me. If a dot or competitor SKU combination is below the x-axis, they're priced below me. Each color and shape differentiates a competitor. That's just so we can pick it up quickly visually. Now, for those of you who prefer tables, I'm going to flash up a sample format of the data. That's going to be your SKUs, the competitors, and then the competitor price difference. Let's break down the chart competitor by competitor so we can understand the interpretation because honestly, that's the fun part. So how about competitor one? I can see that the competitors are generally priced below where I am. If I'm a market leader, I should expect competitors to follow me with a lower price. That's just how it works. It could be the case that they're using a different channel that supports a lower price or Maybe you're just better. You have a higher value proposition and thus you can charge a premium price. What about competitor two? They exhibit a different market position. The competition is generally plus or minus about a percent of my price. If it's a skew that's important to me, it's probably important to my competition. So there aren't a lot of games that can be played there. Everybody sort of has to have the same price. However, as we move toward the tail end of the product portfolio, we can see some differentiation. These are the onesie twosie products that round out your portfolio. So your competitor, the orange diamonds in this case, have said that they are going to charge a premium for these items. I did add a regression line into here because I think that it more clearly shows, yep, this is the trend for really important SKUs. The competitor is spot on my price, but as we get to less important SKUs, they charge a premium. What about competitor three? These are the green squares. They are all over the place. Competitor three is competing on something other than price. Data from this competitor is useful when computing an upper and lower bound for the market but I wouldn't do anything specific when it comes to maybe specifically benchmarking competitor three. When you're looking at sales data, and I see this all the time, uh, you frequently see that it is skewed by a handful of hero skews. And what I mean by that is those are your most important skews. They probably have the highest sales. And uh, as such, they end up compressing the axis if you don't convert it to a logarithmic axis. So, when I do convert things to the logarithmic axis, you can see that things are spread out a little bit more. Your smaller SKUs, which are still important, they get a chance to breathe and show trend data. So that is why I use a logarithmic axis on the x-axis. Now, the audiences that I present to read from left to right, and the most important data on the chart should be on the left. That means the SKUs with the highest sales should be on the left. Do whatever works for your audience. So pulling it all together, we're back at our original chart. And now I think we can make some decisions because I understand what my competitors are doing. In general, I like where I'm priced on my most important SKUs. There's a pretty small dispersion anywhere between 100,000 and a million dollars. There aren't a lot of games to be played, so I'm gonna leave those alone. However, toward the tail end, it appears that there is an opportunity to close the gap with competitor two to collect a premium. I'm not selling a whole lot of these SKUs anyway, and I can probably get away with a little bit of a price increase, and quite frankly, the backlash is low. Still, I have to make sure that I don't get away from my other competitors, otherwise I'm gonna to be too far out of the market.